Hi everybody, this is Nate with Cord Cutters and today I'm going to show you the new Raspberry Pi that's a mere five dollars. Um, <clears throat> this just got announced today in the UK so it's kind of new news um, and um, the, the point of this video is primarily to look at it from the, the perspective of a, a uh, Kodi user because that's how I do things. Um, <clears throat> So to start out with, let's just take a look at what you've got with this $5 Raspberry Pi. Um, to begin with, frankly, the answer is not much. Um, over here you have a micro SD card slot. And, I mean, just to give a perspective on how tiny this thing is, the, this is the micro SD card. This is the whole thing. Um, it's very, very tiny. Uh, but anyway, so that's the micro SD card slot. Here is a mini HDMI slot. Uh, and then over here we have a power USB port. This is a pretty standard micro USB port for power. Um, and the USB port for all of your USB inputs. Um, <clears throat> needless to say, most of your inputs probably don't come as micro USB that way. So you would also definitely need something like this, which is a micro USB to uh, a male micro USB to female USB adapter. And you just plug that in just like this. So, you know, it's a, an absolutely tiny, tiny little device that costs $5. The question is, is it good enough at $5 to run Kodi um, and to be, you know, the replacement for every other device you have in your house? So now that we've taken a look at the Pi, I want to show you what the Pi has to look like for it to be very usable. Uh, this is obviously the Pi itself. What I've done is I plugged in the power right here, uh, and then this is the the USB out uh, input. So this is the power. This is USB. And what you have to do is you get a uh, let's see, it's a male to female mini to regular converter um, and then I plugged that into this handy dandy pluggable um, uh, USB 2.0 7 port dock or hub um, and um, oh, let's do a show right there 7 port hub um, and connected to that I have a Wi-Fi dongle um, and a flirk you can see the flirk symbol probably yeah it's pretty hard to anyway that's the flirk dong symbol right there um and <coughs> finally i have an hdmi cord hooked up to a mini hdmi converter um and that is powering the display uh so these are all of the cords that have to come out of this thing to make it usable oh and obviously there's the micro sd card that's actually running cody um and as you can see it works uh, and um, crazily enough it works basically right out of the box <coughs> the only thing I did once I plugged all this stuff in for setup was um, I went to open a lec and it had already found my USB route uh, USB dongle I went to connections uh, oh wait yeah I went to connections and I picked, I picked, oh wait, is that what I did? Yeah, I, I've already lost track of what I did a little bit. Yeah, I went to connections under open elect, <sighs> went to network, um, made sure that the wireless network was active because it had already picked it out, made sure the connections, uh, there were actually a list of connections, now it only shows one, I guess because I've selected one. Oh, see there, it's doing a poll, and now it's found all the rest. Um, so, I selected my network. It assigned me a, 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 an IP address, um, and everything just sort of started working. Um, all of the add-ons updated themselves, and uh, I guess we're ready to, to get rolling, actually trying to make Cody work on this thing. Um, one thing worth noting, the UI is actually extremely responsive. I'm using a, a remote control connected to or a hooked up uh, um, that, that the Flurk is set to, to work with. So 
as far as that goes, everything seems to be working fine. And it's, as you can see, it's, uh, you should be able to hear the click and see how quickly it responds. <coughs> so the UI is pretty, pretty good. Um, I guess now we'll go ahead and try to set up a library and see how that goes. Um, open elect, oops. Here. Open Elect already has uh, a few folders set up. Well, you know, just to start out with, I'm not going to use those though. So we'll go to videos. Um, I'll hit the wrong button. We'll hit browse. We'll visit the Windows network and let's see what happens. Work group. Oh, there's my server. Uh, and just for speed's sake, we'll add movies and okay don't cancel alright and then we switch the directory so it shows it contains movies and then the separate folder as we do and click OK and refresh alright so um, it has begun scanning We're done. Oops. Well, I take my headphones off here. Okay, how long did that take? I'm not really sure. I'm, I kind of missed it. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll put a like a like a thing right, right here, right here, um, showing you how long it took. And you can be either impressed or horrified at how long that was. Let's see. I think this gives a list. So that was 214 movies scanned in in this period of time. Which, uh, you know, frankly, is actually not bad. Like, it's no PC. But as far as, uh, you know, ARM type processors go, this is, this is holding its own. Frankly, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Um, so I guess now let's uh, <coughs> let's see. I have audio turned off, so we shouldn't get any any flags. But with that said, let's try Big Buck Bunny and see what happens. All right. I don't know what happened that last time there, but this seems to be working. <sighs> Nothing. Nothing out of place. Like I said, I have it muted. The UI seems to be working. Pause it. Stop it, I mean. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, it works really surprisingly well. Um, and it's, it's even picking up whether it's HD or not pretty quickly, which is pretty impressive. Uh, what other things can I test? I can't do 3D because this TV can't do 3D. Um, oh, you know what? I can. Let's try that. Let's, uh, we'll do, we'll do this. Captain America Winter Soldier in 3D. Select alternate mode. Oh, side by side. Well, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Change mode. I mean, obviously you can't, it's hard to tell because I don't have anything going on, but there doesn't seem to be any problem with it turning on the 3D. And I stop it and it flips back over and there it is, stereoscopic 3D turned back off. Yeah, this is kind of amazing. Let's see here. We'll launch YouTube. Or we'll install YouTube. <coughs> that seems to be going fine. Oh, YouTube add on enabled. It's working a little, chugging a little. Uh, 
Oh, oh shoot, and here we go. So now I've updated the repo, uh, force updated it, um, and what that's doing is it's not just installing things like YouTube, it's auto-updating all of the other add-ons that need to be updated, which is going to bog down the CPU probably pretty good for a little bit. Uh, it could be wrong. Maybe maybe it just needed to update MovieDB and, and then we're good. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, and Rooster Teeth. This is my favorite test video. Sight. All right. We're updating more add-ons. These are all helper add-ons. And there's the Rooster Teeth add-on enabled somehow. Okay. So, we launch this. It's still chugging a little. Recently added episodes. See, I don't know. I don't know if you necessarily need to be that worried about the chugging going on right now. Maybe you do. It's hard to say. Um, What's happen what could be happening is all of the add-ons are being updated in the background and it's it's taking up a lot of CPU time. If that's the case, then it's not a big deal. If it's just add-ons being add-ons and they're slow, uh, because let's face it, this is a pretty inexpensive chipset, then that's something to worry about more. I think it, I'll, I'll play around with this a little bit and we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to try to launch this Rooster Teeth Bells Holiday Musical. Getting the video location that popped up pretty quickly. The other issue, and this actually could be my fault. One thing I didn't do, I've so I plugged in, as you can tell, I plugged it in to the, my uh, my USB hub, but I didn't power on the USB hub to an electrical outlet. So it's taking all of the power from the Pi. So, um, that can have some negative effects. Okay, so video playback is still pretty great. Um, I think, oh, yep, it's 720. Yeah, video playback is still pretty great. That's doing a good job. Um, the UI remains pretty, pretty good. Uh, let's see. What's a recently added video here? Um... No, well, these are not very fun to look at. Okay, so Big Hero 6. So now we're going to do the biggest stress test you can do with Cody. Watch a video while navigating the UI. All right. Yeah, so now there's definite there's definite sogginess in in everything. You can you can see the UI kind of chugging at this point. Um, it's possible that with Cody 17, we're, we're going to very distinctly separate the video player from the UI. Uh, and I don't think that's happened on the Pi yet. Uh, but that's the plan. Eventually we're going to separate those two. So video playback and the UI should not affect each other at all. But for now, this is a pretty good stress test. And as you can see, it's definitely stressed out. The uh, frames per second on this UI have fallen dramatically. If we stop the movie, then you'll see the frames pop right back up, and they work great. Um, but I don't know if that's a big problem. So here's, here's kind of what I think. I came into this expecting this to be not good <laughs> I mean it's it's a five dollar pie you know not good is is like the best you should ask of it um, but if you if you're a person who doesn't use PBR very much which means you don't need a lot of UI overlaying the screen um, and, and you're very sequential in how you use Cody so you know you select a movie uh, and then you watch it and you don't need to go into the UI after that. And you aren't constantly scanning in an entire library every other day, aka you're not a tester, then 
I gotta admit, this is this as far as it goes. This is a pretty much fine, a fine little piece of five dollar hardware. If you're, I mean, for example, if you want if you want something to put in the kids' bedroom, this isn't a bad choice. I wouldn't make it a a living room piece of hardware. If you're going that route, I'd still definitely recommend going something like super powered, like you know, an actual PC or an Nvidia Shield or. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 2, even. The Raspberry Pi 2 is a great, in my opinion, a great piece of hardware. The only thing it doesn't have is uh, the Chromecast abilities, which, you know, whatever. Uh, it doesn't, it obviously doesn't have Netflix and those things, too, but I, I could take those or leave them. Um, but for $5, man, this is pretty good. The only trick, of course, is that it's not really $5. It's $5, assuming. You have this cord and this cord and this cord and this cord um, and a USB hub. <laughs> uh, what What's the minimum you could get by with? I think, I think it would be possible to control this with just a power cord, the converter, uh, and a wireless router and a mini HDMI to HDMI cord. And those are actually, you can get those kind of cheap. So that's not a big deal. Just go to Amazon and get them cheap if you don't have it already. The rest of the cords, it's very possible you already have them. And if you do, then what would happen is, in order to make it work that way, if you, if you didn't want to use one of these, one of these USB hubs, you would plug in the Wi-Fi to this port here. Um, plug in the power to you know your standard power thing. You could power it from the TV because this thing takes basically no voltage at all. Um, and then use the TV's HDMI CEC to control the Pi because this still does have an HDMI CEC adapter built in, which means that you don't need to have a flirk, I guess. Um, I've heard reports, I haven't used a Pi that way in a long time, but I've heard reports that the the U HDMI CEC input is a little bit more laggy than like a Flirk USB input or a keyboard or something like that. <coughs> so it's probably not the ideal way to do it, especially not if you need to use the UI while you're watching a video. But, man, I... Uh, depending on what you have at home already, you really could get by on just just about nothing to to buy this thing. It would be tremendously cheaper than like a like an Amazon stick or Fire Stick or whatever they're called. Uh, so I don't know. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool device. I, I you know uh, it's five dollars. So I, I guess I'd suggest checking it out. It's not like, I mean, it's less than the cost of a McDonald's Happy Meal. So, pretty cool. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, feel free to check, um, I don't know where, where. click, uh, I guess here. Click, uh, this little dark hole in the wall. There. Right. Oh, I can just point at it. Point, well, yeah, there we go. Click that dark hole in the wall and, um, you can see the the review I have up of the uh, Nvidia Shield uh, TV, Android TV, which is like the polar opposite of this. Like on one end you have this five dollar thing, and on that end you have basically one of the great, greatest Android gaming devices on the planet. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe because people say you should say that. Uh, and uh, have a good day.